Good evening. My name is Leroy Brown and welcome to Bridging the Gap. Joy Fest is almost here again and tonight we have some people that are on the panel that's going to talk about Joy Fest and give you some information that's going to make you want to come to Joy Fest this year. I'm going to ask each one of them to tell you a little about themselves and then we'll actually get into what Joy Fest is all about. Hang on. <laughs> hey, my name is Pastor Jeremiah Stingle from Living Water Community Church. Hi, my name is Bernard Kendrick from the Pass of the Glad Tidings Apostolic Assembly, and I am an MC for Joy Fest. Hi, I'm Tom Fink. I'm an 18 year resident of Bolingbrook, and I've been on the Joy Fest committee for about eight years now. Hi, I'm Reverend Ruth Newell. I'm the co chair of the Bolingbrook Christian Community Clergy. I'm the clergy liaison for Joy Fest and the stage manager. Hi, my name is Sheldon Watts. I wear several different hats. I'm actually the chairman of uh, the Bolingbrook Joy Fest Planning Committee, as well as the coordinator for our vendors and our performers. Okay, Mr. Sheldon Watts. All right. What is the date and time of Joy Fest? People need to know that because we want them to come out. So, so Mr. Brown, uh, Joy Fest will take place on September 9th, 2017. The way to remember it, it is the day after the, uh, well, the day before, I'm sorry, the Pathways Parade. So uh, the Pathways Parade, uh, the big parade in town is September 10th. Joy Fest is the Saturday before, before the second Saturday of the month, September 9th. Thank you for that. Pastor Kendrick, what is the purpose and the mission of Joy Fest? The purpose and the mission of the Joy Fest is to be a family, fun, Christian, musical, festival and it's, it bridges the gap for all of the community churches within the Bolingbrook area because we are family. Come and be family, food, fun, and praise and worship. Okay, there's going to be a lot going on. Uh, Reverend Ruth, what inspires each of you to come be on the Joy Fest Planning commi Committee? Well, one of the things is that we see other concerts in the community and plays and things and also in Chicago where you have the big gospel fest and some people don't want to drive into Chicago so we decided we would come together and have something here in our community where we could all come together and praise God under one roof okay, and and that's what now say it again <laughs> come together and praise God under one roof Okay, I just want to make sure you get that out there, folks. You yes, know, we want everybody. this message out there, right? We want okay. everybody. It's okay. no denomination. It's everybody coming together to praise God through music under one roof. Okay, Mr. Tom Fink, when does the committee begin planning for Joy Fest? We try to start really right after we're done with the performance on the night. Uh, it's definitely a year-long process. There's a lot of small things that we need to do you know to create a big event we like to start as early as possible we like to make sure that we ensure things for our kids zone uh, make sure that we have the trackless train read in make sure that we have the climbing wall we have the uh, library's bookmobile coming all those things we'd like to do way at a time we really get into the swing of things as the year then starts to progress with signing up the performers signing up the vendors and then really by may of the uh the year before uh, september it, it's just full tilt all the way you know with regular meetings uh, weekly uh, making sure everything's ordered make sure our, our game plan is intact to just have the best event that we can possibly have you know at that time so many of us work just year-round behind the scenes I know mr. watch he kind of alluded to some of those things right. like what goes into the actual planning of it it's it's a big event there's a lot of things moving parts behind it what actually goes into the planning of it well, you, you, you hit the nail on the head, Mr. Brown. There are certainly a lot of moving parts. You know, everything from arranging the, the performers to our, our vendors, both product and food vendors, um, the facilities, uh, the grounds for the day. We have a uh, very nice kid zone, uh, which takes planning to prepare for that. So uh, we divvy up the action items. Um, we have an individual or a person that's respond, responsible for each area, and we come together weekly, and we give updates, 
and we move things along. As you can imagine, the closer we get to uh, the Joy Fest event, the more sort of hectic it gets uh, with the planning. I, I think a part of that is definitely our review process at the end of the, every year. Those who have been faithful about coming to Joy Fest routinely every year. Right. Every year they've seen it grow by leaps right. and bounds, not only by the performers that we're able to bring in too, but then also by what we're able to do with our kids zone and just our ability to reach out to the community. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we do at the end of uh, every Joy Fest planning season, which is basically you know September 10th, the day after, we, we plan to get together for a wrap up, a sort of a lessons learned type discussion where we talk about the things that went well, the things that we want to improve, and we always implement that in our, our strategy and planning for the following year. Now, I know Joy Fest, it, it's a lot going on in Joy Fest, uh, and you've been a driving force, and you've got a very nice committee together, very committed, committed, committed together. Who else is on the committee, and what is their roles? Or what are their roles? So several of our committee members are, are with us here today. Uh, to ensure I don't forget anybody, I'm going to take a look at our list here. So first and foremost, we have uh, Mr. Leroy Brown, who is the host of this show. We want to thank you, Mr. Brown, for uh, having us here today. Uh, Mr. Brown is actually our president and CEO and founder. Uh, so it's Mr. Brown, and, and there were a couple of other people that I believe in the, in the late 80s had this vision for Joy Fest, and I'm just excited and proud to be a part of continuing that vision. Uh, we also have, of course, myself, uh, chairman and vendor coordinator, as well as performer coordinator this year. We have Mr. Harris Franklin, who is uh, our fundraising coordinator, and he does a great job in uh, knocking on doors and, and talking to the business community, uh, churches, and so forth to uh, donate funds to sponsor this great event. We have uh, Pastor Ruth Newell, uh, clergy liaison and stage coordinator, Mr. Tom Fink, who wears several hats as well, as well. He's our security coordinator. He's our treasurer. He manages all of our, our funds. Uh, he also uh, updates our website. Uh, so we thank him for all of those things. Pastor Bernard Kendricks, who's with us this year, very energetic and spirited uh, gentleman who we are very excited to have on board with us this year as MC. Uh, we have Pastor Jeremiah uh, Stingle uh, from Living Water Church, also uh, MC, and we're tremendously excited to have him on board with us. Prior to Pastor Jeremiah being with us, we had Pastor Ken Hansen for Living Water. So Pastor Jeremiah is carrying the torch uh, for Living Water, and we really appreciate him being with us. Uh, pastor Mark Huey, uh, former pastor of uh, First Presbyterian Church is our other MC. So we have three MCs this year and they're gonna keep the event going. Uh, Kimberly Owens from DuPage Township. Everyone knows Kimberly Owens. She does a great job and she supports so many different uh, organizations within the community. So we're glad to have her. Um, she manages our Kid Zone and she is taking the Kid Zone to another level this year. So we want to make sure uh, the, the kids uh, and, the, and the, the little ones are out at Joy Fest to enjoy the big plans we have for uh, Joy Fest 2017 Kid Zone. We have uh, Pastor Chris Hudson, who is the assistant stage manager and also manages our, give, our giveaways. And uh, so like Chris, uh, Harris Franklin handles fundraising, Chris handles specifically our giveaways for prizes and things of that nature. We have Raquel Mitchell, who's doing a great job uh, securing our volunteers, uh, reaching out to people, requesting uh, people uh, to volunteer the day of. And so if you're interested, please uh, reach out to us. Uh, we, we're always in need of volunteers, and Raquel does a great job of, of keeping track of that. And then we have a new member this year, Nat Garofalo, who is handling our social media. So we have a huge Facebook presence this year, and uh, Nat is, has been a big part of that, and we will continue to put, push out posts. So please, like our Facebook page. You can just search for Bolingbrook Joy Fest on Facebook. Please like our page and our posts as they come out. And that's the same for our website, too. Same Bolingbrook, for our website. Bolingbrook Joy Fest. We keep the website updated as updates come in. We upload it, Tom handles that. We upload it to our website, so we try to keep that up to date. We will be posting our event schedule on the website and Facebook, so uh, please uh, keep that in mind. Thank you. You know, um, 
Reverend Ruth, I'm going to ask you two questions. Uh, one of them is in script. Uh, we have a number of pastors that's on Joy Fest. Why it is so important to have pastors involved in Joy Fest? Why is that so important? It's very important so that we can continue to pray for our community. We all come together and we pray, and they're of all different denominations. So uh, we just want to make sure that the people are there, that they know that you are in good hands because there's only one God and we always pray and we minister to the people sometimes. So it is very important to let people know that we're all one and we're his child and we're from one God and we're all maybe different denominations, but we are all under the same roof and we're all praising God, doing the same thing. So it's important to show that diversity in Christianity, because sometimes you don't get to show that diversity. You know, they used to say that uh, 11 o'clock was the most segregated hour, and in this case, it is not. We are, our community is very diverse, and so is our churches. Yes. Uh, can you give me the history? Tell us a little of history about Joy Fest. How did this come about? I mean, I know these answers, but the people out there don't know these, so. <laughs> Well, the Bolingbrook Joy Fest was founded by several local re residents, one being Mr. Leroy Brown, uh, Christine Parker, and Pastor Brown. Prior to its inception in 1998, the Bolingbrook Christian community sponsored an event called Gospel Fest. The Gospel Fest began as a small indoor con concert that was held at Jane Addams Middle School, which is located right here in Bolingbrook. Um, the event leaders reached beyond the Bolingbrook community, pulling ministries from Chicago, Joliet, and other towns. And we actually still do that today. We pull people from Chicago, Joliet, Woodridge, Wheaton, um, from all over. Each year, the event has grown and it has continued to attract a lot of people, not just from around Bolingbrook, but from the Chicagoland area, um, Indiana and Wisconsin. We actually had somebody call today from Wisconsin. We participate and support our local businesses, our food vendors. Um, the media has partnered with our event organizers and we continue to be steadfast with their support. Most important, our mayor, the Honorable Roger C. Clare, has, and the village trustees have supported and continued to play a vital role in the Bolingbrook Joy Fest. And the commitment has been so successful, uh, it just affirms the knowledge of the role of the churches in the community. I think right now we have about almost 50 churches within the Bolingbrook community. And so it just, um, com it, that commitment there. And we have a lot of people that come out for the Christian community, um, people from St. Francis all the way to Living Water, to Glad Tidings, to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So we have people from all over that come. And they don't just come from uh, Bolingbrook. They come from Joliet, Chicago. I get a lot of calls from people coming from Chicago. And we keep raising the bar. Last year, we had Charles Jenkins. And this year, we've got some surprises coming up. And you'll hear about those a little bit later. But um, yeah, that's, that's our history. And we keep growing bigger and bigger. And I think just to expound on that a little, when you talk about Gospel Fest, when you say Gospel Fest, it denotes something else rather than multi-churches involvement. Right. So that was very, you know, created from people that decided to go, let's not go Gospel, let's go Joy Fest. We want people to come out and be joyful. Right. You know, and that's very good. Pastor Jeremiah, you know, for something like this, because, you know, this committee is led by uh, uh, Mr. Watt and uh, uh, Reverend Newell that have brought some real top performers into this Joy Fest uh, event. And you would think that it costs a lot for people to come in, at least have some kind of cost. What does it cost for people to come to Joy Fest? It is absolutely free. It is a free event. And really the committee, the organizing committee, and we solicit sponsors, as well as the, the, the vendors that come, and they are able to provide an environment where we can provide this to our community for free. And so we want everyone 
to come out and enjoy. Really, there's no, uh, there's no reason why you can't come. I mean, it's a place of love and acceptance. You're going to find a lot of people who are having a joyful time. And so I think uh, it would be a great event for people to be able to come out to. You know, well, you figure, Tom, I'm going to ask you this question. There's a lot going on in Joy Fest. Like you say, there are a number of people that are high performance. You know, they, they, they have albums out, they have videos out. I mean, it costs a lot for these people. Then how is Joy Fest funded? Well, I think it, it, it's interesting that the fact is just as how diverse our community is, how diverse the, our performers are, too, as well. You, you know, in order to to be able to reach out to everybody within our community, that would not be possible at all with our without the donations of our sponsors. Uh, they're very gracious. You know, the businesses, the churches, community residents. Uh, so far, the sponsors that we have, and we have more coming in. Of course, the Honorable Roger Claire, DuPage County Township, Advantage Chevrolet, uh, Thrivet Financial, Robin Schwartz Law Firm. Uh, State Farm, Gerald McCann, Greater I-55 Truck Stop, Master Barbers, Rocket Ice Arena, Living Water Community Church, Fountaindale Public Library, uh, 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 Bolingbrook Township, uh, Bolingbrook Park District, uh, uh, Tristone Consulting, and, and others that uh, who are coming in daily who help support and believe in, in what we believe about getting the message to God out to the people in a, you know, really, truly a non-traditional format, you know, preaching kind of without preaching, you know, come, you know, that worship, that praise that brings people together of, of, of basically all walks in life, you know, through, through music and through the dance that you see up on stage. But if it wasn't for those sponsors coming forward to help us, we would never be able to pull this off for free. It's truly those who share the same vision as we do. And every year, it, they really step up to the plate because as we raise the bar, they also have to raise the bar too if we want to continue to grow. So we're very thankful to those people you know, who donate, who have stood by our side every year, year after year and those coming in. So if you want to be part of the organization, you, you know, uh, as far as sponsors or volunteering, reach out to one of us and we'll be more than happy to, we'll be more than happy to help you, you know, be involved with the organization. And we have Miss Anita Canto Scott oh, as well. Uh, she is a big contributor to JoyFest every year. She is very generous on how she denote, uh, donate to JoyFest. So we definitely want to recognize her. Uh, Pastor Jeremiah, you know, we say there are people that are pastors, and, and, and as you notice, when you see a pastor in the pulpit, you know, some of them, you know, very funny. You know, they got a sense of humor. So <laughs> since you guys are going to be the MCs, uh, you know, what, what is your role being on the stage and doing that? Well, we want to keep the crowd engaged. I mean, we want to keep people dialed in, ready for that next performer. We want to introduce each of the acts and the performers as they come on. Uh, we also want to uh, have a Bible trivia time or have some giveaways and crowd participation there. And really just generally just keep everybody having a good time. I mean, it's a joy fest. And me and Pastor Kendrick here, we are going to do our best to yes, keep it filled with lots of fun. A lot of fun. Yes, well, I can see it's going to be fun already, you know. I uh, understand there are going to be giveaways, you know, gifts. Can you give us a little idea as to how that works? I mean, you got a fest that's uh, not not funded by you guys, but it's funded by everyone. You're not taking donations, and you're not having people pay when they come in. So how do you give all these gifts away? I mean, I know Mr. Fink's read a lot of that, but how are you going to do that? Well, we're going to uh, take some of the CDs and books and things like that that we can give away, as well as some donations and stuff that have come from local businesses. And so it's going to give us an opportunity to just give away some really cool stuff. Everybody can walk away saying, hey, I was able to participate in a game and a trivia. Uh, it's going to have some, some Bible content, so it's really going to keep it encouraging for the whole family. And uh, for those of you who are really dialed into uh, Bible trivia, you're going to have a great time with that. And then we have another pastor, Pastor Chris, who's uh, getting a lot of these giveaways away. Can you elaborate on that? Son? That's correct. So Pastor Chris Hudson um, out of Romeoville, he is, um, as I mentioned earlier, going to assist backstage. But his role during the pl planning phase of this is securing... Uh, contributions and donations from various businesses. So he's worked very hard. Everybody from from Walgreens to Chipotle to you name it, um, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin Donuts. Uh, he has done a very good job of 
securing you know gift <coughs> cards uh, and things of that nature, um, half off coupons and you know a lot of good stuff that that are going to be you know handed to our MCs to sort of distribute uh, as part of that Bible trivia. And we got two of our volunteers that are in the audience. Uh, could you kind of elaborate on them, what they're doing? Because I know they're very excited about this as well. So with us here, we have uh, Kimberly Owens, who I introduced uh, as one of our um, committee members, and uh, Raquel Mitchell, who uh, are thankful they're here just to be supportive. We want to say hi to you guys backstage. And thank you for all that you do supporting Joy Fest. We really appreciate it. I know Ms. Kimberly does the... Uh, uh, kids the, zone. the kids zone, right? Uh -huh. And she's expecting more kids this year. Understanding kids zone is going to go to a different level, right? Yes. Well, we we've certainly upped our budget uh, as it relates to the kids zone because we want to make sure uh, the the children there are enjoying themselves and they're having fun and it's festive. And so uh, we really took taken the time. And Kimberly has worked really hard to negotiate uh, some some good deals on on different things associated with the kids zone. So we certainly want you to bring the kids out so that they can enjoy uh, kids zone at Joy Fest. You need a lot of volunteers, I understand too. Now who's handling that? So our, our, that's uh, Raquel Mitchell, as I mentioned, and, and she's doing a good job. Uh, we, we try to assist as committee members. If we can think of people, we send them to Raquel, uh, but she's done a good job of sort of tracking that and reaching out to people uh, to, to get them to, to volunteer. It's a, it's a lot of moving parts, as mentioned, so she has to assign people to these different areas, whether it's backstage, whether it's managing uh, the kid zone area, uh, whether it's passing out uh, the, the handout cards the day of the event. All of these different things uh, require volunteers, and Raquel Mitchell has done a great job last year, and we know she's going to do a good job this year. Right, and then you got some young people like from the Joanne Robinson program. Yes, and yes. And from the Marcellus Boxing program. Yes. So that's very good to have young people involved in this. It gives them a platform as to what they see that would allow them in order to get involved in whatever religiosity that's out there. So that's very good that she's targeting those young people to get out there. Exactly. Now, how is Joyfest marketed? So, uh, you know, we do it in a lot of different ways, right? Some of the more traditional ways where we have handout cards that we distribute to our churches uh, as committee members, we distribute them to our friends and families. And so we do have the actual placards, handout cards that we give out. Uh, we mentioned our website, which Tom does a great job. Uh, as updates come in, I give them to Tom and he uploads them on our website. So that's a good way, which is uh, the address is www.bolingbrookjoyfest.com. We ask you to visit. Uh, the, up, the information is updated on, on that site. Uh, but, you know, the bulk of it, and also signage. We have signage around town. And, you know, Bolingbrook is really fortunate to have these large digital boards around town. So it's on the digital board. Uh, we have a real nice Bolingbrook Joy Fest display this year there. Uh, and we're, we, you will see little yard signs out and about around town. Uh, so when you stop at that stoplight and you look over to the side, you'll see Bowling Brick Joy Fest September 9th. So that's one way we do it. But I would say the biggest way we're transitioning more and more to social media. Uh, that is the way to go. One of our Facebook posts just recently um, reached about 8,000, close to 8,000 people. So you really have a very far and wide reach through social media. So we really want to encourage you when you see those Joy Fests, uh, Facebook uh, post to like the post, share the post, like the page. Uh, we greatly appreciate it because we want to get the word out and we know that social media via Facebook and, and other means is really the best way to do it these days. Pastor Kendrick, now there is a lot going on in Joy Fest. Now what else is going to be going on besides music? That isn't the only thing that's happening, right? No, sir, Mr. Brown, we're going to have Kid Zone. Uh, food vendors, product vendors, as well as Bible trivia and giveaways. At the same time this year, we have already had an addition to our Kid Zone with Kimberly Owens. We'll be having a clown show, uh, face painting, as well as balloon art time. Amen. And I just want to take this time to encourage pastors and leaders yeah. in our churches to invite your congregation out to Bolingbrook Joy Fest. September the 9th, 
from one to six, and I guarantee you, you're going to have a good time. I plan to be there. I plan to do my job as an MC to let you know that Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you say you're going to be there because I was getting worried there for a while. <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Thank you for, you know, making me understand that. Okay. <laughs> Miss Ruth, what other activities? I know they talked about, you know, the bouncing house. They talked, what else is going to be there as far as activities? Well, you've got the climbing wall from the park district. Uh, we have the train that takes people around. Um, they're going to have face painting. And there's a, a lady that's sort of like a clown that does balloon art. And I actually got a chance to meet her at another event. And she came around and did some art and put a balloon on my head. So she's <laughs> fantastic. So, um, but yeah, so it's a lot of stuff. Um, and of course, the games, there are tons of games and giveaways for the kids. So mm -hmm. that makes it really, really bring the kids out. You, yeah. you know, you have no reason to stay at home from the little small infants to 18, I guess, I don't know, whatever, whatever that age bracket is, bring the kids out and let them come and enjoy with the bouncy house and listen to some good music. And who knows, maybe even a surprise rap, Christian rap music or something. We actually got a Christian rock group. So, I mean, we've got a little bit of something for everybody and the kids will enjoy it. And of course they can eat and eat and have fun. There's tons of food that's gonna be around, so. So in other words, you're saying bring the family, bring, bring the, the family. community. Yes. yes. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Fink, what are some of the vendors that's going to be on board for Joy Fest? I think it's interesting, just as diverse as our music is going to be, just as diverse as our vendors and our sponsors that are going to be there. Uh, definitely mind, body, soul, and spirit you know, is going to be represented with that. So, for example, we have Coop's Den. That's going to be one of the food debt vendors. Coleman Concessions. We're going to have uh, Cairo One Chiropractic there. We're going to have Costco. We're going to have Lula Row Clothing. We're going to have Twins Benefit and Financial Services. We're going to have Thrivet Financial Services. We're going to have Transforming Life's Academy there and many, many others. So just as diverse as, as we want to be with the music and the praise that we're going to be able to bring to people, we want them to go and visit our, our vendors, and we want them to to uh, just uh, you know, seek those things that might help them as well. And I know that we've added some uh, uh, authors, you know, to the agenda just recently yes, too. Yes, some yes. people that'll be selling books too as, as well. So we encourage everybody to come out. You know, one-stop shopping. You know, body, mind, spirit, and soul. You know, and shopping and, for the ladies. And, and shopping for the because ladies because a lot of people know about Lula Roll clothing. Right. So there, she, the lady that's there is a Bolingbrook resident. And she's going to be giving a, a gift card out as a giveaway. She will have her uh, pop-up dressing room with a mirror. So if you love LuLaRoe clothing and you love their leggings and their dresses and tops, then you need to come out because she's got some fantastic stuff. I've been to her boutique, so I've shopped with her. So good clothing. So ladies, come out, bring your wallet. Because <laughs> she has some good stuff. Personal well, advertisement. Yeah, I was, I was just about to say. Are Break you for commercial. Of, right, right, right. <laughs> or, we just, we just or, gave the commercial. Yeah, or, or gentlemen, give your ladies the credit card. and She does take credit cards, by the way, too. So just go put that in there. <laughs> This is supposed to be a Christian faith-based talk. And she is Christian. Right, right. We're not going to talk about Christian. husbands giving credit cards because that could cause a problem. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to get off that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Watts, who are some of the, you know, the performers? And then elaborate on some of the past performers we've right. had, if you can. Right. Okay. So, you know, I've been involved for, for several years now, and the event has really continued to grow and grow. and one thing that um, as a committee, our goal as it relates to performers, as has been mentioned, is to have a, a variety and a diversity of sound. Right. Mm -hmm. So from every spectrum, right, from uh, your, your St. Francis uh, Catholic Church uh, praise team to your most uh, traditional gospel choir and everything in between, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so last year, 
uh, we had leading the lineup was Charles Jenkins and Fellowship Chicago. And they are a well-known uh, group, and they just so happened to have an album coming out uh, with the, one of his lead songs uh, was Winning. And um, really, really exciting. Really, really exciting, and it really brought a, a sizable crowd out. Uh, but, you know, it's also about our local churches. Mm -hmm. And we have several local churches, and every year we try to have a strong contingent of local churches and local presence. And the hope is that they will bring their church body, and we will all be able to have a great time and, and fellowship together. But as it relates to this year, Joy Fest 2017, as I mentioned, we have St. Francis of Assisi, uh, who has kicked off the Joy Fest event uh, for the past several years. Uh, and they'll be back. We have First Baptist Church of Bolingbrook, who has a nice praise band. Uh, and they'll be with us this year, local church. We have Alpha Missionary Baptist Church, uh, their music ministry as well as their drama ministry. And one of the things we're excited about, this is, as far as I know, as long as I've been on Joy Fest, this is the first time that Alpha uh, has participated. Uh, and we're always looking for new and different churches. So we're really excited to have um, Alpha Missionary Baptist Church with us. As it relates to, you know, on your question about previous years, Living Water Church has participated for several years. Um, they won't be participating as a, as a band this year, but we have their pastor. Uh, right. So, uh, you know, they're engaged. And so uh, just wanted to give a shout out to Living Water there. We have Jubilee Baptist Church, another new participant. Uh, these are churches that we've always aspired to have on board, and we're just ex really, really excited to have them with us. Uh, Jubilee's bringing their youth uh, choir. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they'll be with us. ASAF. So when we talk about diversity of sound, ASAF is a Christian rock band. So that is diversity. That brings uh, a certain sound. Uh, and we're hoping that, you know, those that love rock music, those that uh, aspire to uh, hear Christian music will come out and hear ASAF. Uh, and, and those that may not necessarily be in the rock music can still find some enjoyment out of that music. And so uh, we have up to, I believe now, 13 different performers, which is different and unique because, you know, most events you have just a couple of performers and, you know, they each get a couple of hours and then there's a 30 minute break. Well, Joy Fest is sort of in your face with back to back to back performances. And it's all about having fun and it's all about, you know, again, the diversity of sound. So, uh, the whole spectrum is there in that uh, from 1 to 6 p.m. time frame. We have Jessica Love, who is a praise uh, band leader uh, in her own right. Uh, she has done um, albums with prof real high profile professional singers, and she's a great singer in her own, her own right. Uh, she's going to be with us. Uh, so we're happy to have Jessica. Crossroads of Faith. Uh, as we know, is uh, one of our churches here in Bolingbrook. They have an outstanding praise band. Uh, they're going to be back with us this year. Uh, those uh, in the community that know Russ Fletcher, who's been really involved in the community over the years, is part of that band. Uh, Nat uh, Garofalo, who was on our committee this year, actually goes to Crossroads of Faith. He's sort of the behind-the-scenes behind guy, stage guy for their band. So we're glad to have him on board. Uh, Raynaud Williams is a singer. I believe he's a radio host. Uh, he has his own following, and he's a great singer. Uh, he's going to be with us. Glad Tidings Apostolic Assembly, uh, who is, uh, we're, we're blessed to have Pastor Kendricks, who pastors that church. Their praise team is going to be with us, and they've been with us over the years, and, and they are fantastic. Uh, a recent ad, we have Nate Ross. Um, who's performed the past couple of years is going to be with us this year. We have Kim Franklin, who, uh, it's my understanding, has attended Westbrook Church over the years, is pretty well known in the community, and is an outstanding uh, singer and soloist, and she's bringing a band with her. Uh, to sort of headline and um, um, sort of lead off things, we have Dexter Walker and Zion Movement, the award-winning Dexter Walker and Zion Movement. We just uh, posted a YouTube video uh, of their uh, Verizon How Sweet the Sound uh, participation where uh, they won awards, and so they are 
uh, very animated uh, in their presentation and uh, they do an excellent job and, and you're sure to enjoy uh, their, their performance. We have um, Valencia Lacey, an uncomfortable worshiper. worshiper. She is a uh, very well-known Chicagoland uh, singer. Uh, and she's bringing her band with her and a very, very strong and dynamic uh, voice. So we're looking forward to having the whole spectrum of performers here with us at Joy Fest 2017. Uh, that's a lot. There's no doubt. There's a lot. Reverend uh, Ruth Newell. Now, we know those people have albums. I mean, they're out there. They're all over. Some of them play out of the country. They're very expensive in nature because of who they are. How do you get these people to come here for such a low price, you know, for Joy Fest? <laughs> I mean, you could, they could charge $10,000 to come to some of these events, but they do not. How do you get that That's to happen? That's true. A lot of it is through networking, and I do network with a lot of them. I know uh, a lot of them, and I have friends. Last year, uh, with Charles Jenkins, Charles Jenkins' brother and I went to school together, so there was a connection. Um, with Valencia Lacey, it was more of our in-house family church that we worked together, and plus I found out she's part of Pastor Kendrick's extended family, <laughs> so um, that that worked out. And it's a lot of negotiating, though. Mm -hmm. We 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 know that we want this to be an act of love and worship, and not about money. And I do try to stress that with them that. This is still about reaching people and trying to save the souls of people that are lost and helping those that maybe need just a little bit of lifting up and encouragement. So it, it, it can be a lot of negotiating, and we've done a lot of negotiating this year. <laughs> so um, back and forth, but I, I, God makes it happen. So yeah. I can't complain because you're right. Some of these people want $10,000 or plus. plus. So yes. Well, I could imagine if anybody could talk somebody down, you could. <laughs> uh, that's a no-brainer there, you know. But that's a good thing, Ms. Newell. You know, that's a good thing. I, we appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Fink, I know when you talk about fundraising, I know you're, you're what they call the bank keeper, the, the, the everything keeper when it comes to the finances. How hard is that to keep up with that kind of money and make sure that everything's being done right? How does that work for you? It, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, <laughs> as the committee will tell you, because I'm the guy that pretty much says no, you know, because I'm very concerned about the, the bottom dollar. You know, are we going to have enough money in order to, to give the community the best show, you know, the best experience that they can have? So I have to ensure that we have that money in the bank. And then I also want to ensure that we are able to not only raise the bar this year, but raise the bar for years to come. Right. So uh, it, com it comes down to a, a lot of team effort about, you know, what we can afford, how we can afford it. Once again, it goes back to our sponsors that have been with us forever. You know, and those new ones coming on, they're very generous because they believe, you know, in the same cause and the same spirit that we believe in, you know, in, in the Lord, and they're there to, to reach out to that message. But, yeah, it, it's difficult when you're a fixed budget and you're saying to the community, come, we want to worship you, we want to praise with you, we want to fellowship with you, and guess what? We're going to do that with you for free. It, it, it's, a, it's a daunting task. Yes. Now, Pastor Kendrick, also, you have, we have 44 churches in town. Uh, how do you identify and how do you get the different churches to actually participate in this? Because so often churches don't like to get involved in things like that. Uh, and I don't know the reason why, but how do you get people to get on board? I know you're part of the Pastoral Council. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm a part of the Bolingbrook Christian Clergy Association. It's a group of pastors within the community, and once a month we fellowship together and pray for our concerns of our community. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we just enjoy one another. And I think that's the reason why um, I enjoy um, working in the Bolingbrook community because we are so diverse and we work together. And because of our leadership, it causes us to have a cohesive relationship where we can all praise and worship the same God, regardless of our denominational differences, we are that diverse. Mm -hmm. Pastor Jeremiah, how important is diversity in something like this? I mean, you people come from all over, but how important is diversity? 
Well, I mean, it's a reflection of our community. So, first of all, it's so important because that's who Bolingbrook is. I mean, we are a very diverse community. But also, it gives a good representation of what heaven's going to be like. I mean, heaven's going to all colors. There's, there's, there's no, uh, no person who is outside of the reach of Jesus Christ and uh, what God wants to do in their lives. And so for us to have an event like this in our community that says we're representing you know, God and his kingdom, uh, man, it, it, is, it is paramount for us to all come together. And so you see that reflection here as well as the people that are going to come to the event, the performers, uh, the vendors. Uh, you know, it's really a place where we can lift up a banner of unity and really be a testimony to, to our community and to even the nation. That's right. um, what's going on yeah. right now that, that people can love each other. And that it's going to start with us. It's going to start with the church. Mm -hmm. And that's who we want to be. That's right. And it's good. I I'm kind of knew that answer, but I knew you would bring it home the way it should be brought. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that explanation as to the way you've done that. But I also understand, too, and know that just from being in Joy Fest, this is our 19th year of doing it, uh, that there are people that come that has no religiosity at all, has no faith at all. But when they come to Joy Fest, something happens. What is that all about? It's about praise and worship, uh, Mr. Brown. And I just feel that when we come together, uh, we're coming together to, um, to magnify God. That's the first thing. Yeah. And then the second thing is that not only are we singing, but we are ministering to people. Mm -hmm. People are coming that are hurting and they just need help, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical. The Word of God said that the joy of the Lord mm -hmm. is your strength. Mm -hmm. And because that is the case, person can come, they can be sick, and because of music, music and because of the comedians that are going to be there and the things that's going to be taking place they can feel a connection mm -hmm. i'm not the only person feeling this way yeah. mm -hmm. that they can obtain help mm -hmm. doing this joy fest that is very important you know i i really appreciate what you're saying because you're absolutely right there are people that are hurting that have no way to go we have homeless people out there homeless kids and some of them come to Joy Fest and feel there is a purpose in life just for what is being presented in music, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's music, music kind of soothes the soul. It yes. actually does. The, the average beast can be, and all of a sudden music can stop doing what it's doing. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate the fact that you have people that are on that stage that are ministering to people that have never been in a church before. Right, right. But they see some some way that, wow, maybe I should go to church. If this is what's happening in church, and this is the way people are in church, why wouldn't I go? So that's why I appreciate the fact that we have ministers, we have pastors on Joy Fest that's working with us in Joy Fest, because that presence that you have and the message that you give them gives them hope. Yes. And if there's anything out there, people that need hope, they can get it from music and get it from people that are. And, and you guys actually minister to people. I mean, we almost had church for minutes ago, you know, so <laughs> I understand that, and that's a good thing. Well, the other thing we do, too, Mr. Brown, is that we pray. We do a lot yes. of praying before. And I don't know if people realize that you come out, like, about 6 o'clock in the morning, and you walk the whole grounds and pray mm. over the whole grounds. Mm. And then when the team gets together before we start we get together as a team and we pray before we start joy fest so there's a lot of prayer going on mm -hmm. and we have churches that are praying for us absolutely while we're doing that so prayer is real important that is true and and you look at this this committee that's up here and all these people have jobs they have daytime jobs you know they're out there ministering to people doing what they have to do like Mr. Watts, when Mr. Watts came on board, you know, I had actually stopped it a year, and then I wanted to start up another year, and Mr. Watts came on and said, okay, you're the chairman, it's your thing, I have nothing to do with it, you take it and run with it, you know, um, and you're going to get your doctoring, I mean, you have a major job that you're working on, you've got two twins at home, you know, a wife, a family, but yet and still, you have got a team together that has brought this to a level that not a lot of people can say when it comes to the Christian world of singing. Right. You have done so much to bring Joy Fest to this level. And I really appreciate that. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, they say, I'm the CEO, this, that, and I'm, I'm the person to sit back and look at you and say, look what you're doing, you know. <laughs> My God, it makes us all look good, you know. Right. It makes the community look good. And that's a great thing to have a person like you 
uh, that can do something like this, that can get a team like this that work. You know, like with Ms. Ruth, she ministers to people every day. She's out there helping people in courts. She's doing everything she can do to make sure that people have a stable life and make sure that people have some kind of representation to do what they need to do. Uh, so I want to just make sure that, that everything is going the way it should go. So I see I got a message that's coming. Promo. Promo, that's right. You um, want to do that right now? At this point, you said I've been going on because I, I'm, I'm enjoying this so much. Yeah. So at this point, we're going to look at the promo that was done, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. The promo is great. Please look and listen to it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sheldon Watts, and I'm the chairman of the Bolingbrook Joy Fest Planning Committee. It's that time of year again. I would like to extend a personal invitation to join us at this year's Bolingbrook Joy Fest. Joy Fest 2017 takes place on Saturday, September 9th, from 1 to 6 p.m. at our beautiful Performing Arts Center behind Bolingbrook's Town Center. The Bolingbrook Joy Fest is an exciting community, Christian music festival, coordinated by a team of volunteers here in Bolingbrook. Joy Fest provides a unique opportunity to bring the community together for praise and fellowship without borders. There will be live entertainment, food vendors, product vendors, great prizes and giveaways, a kid zone with new and exciting activities, and much more for everyone to enjoy. If you attended Joy Fest last year, then you know the amazing time we had with Charles Jenkins and Fellowship Chicago Choir to cap off a strong lineup from top to bottom. Well, this year we have another spirit-filled lineup of great soloists, praise teams, and choirs, including none other than Valencia Lacey and Unquenchable Worshipers and the award-winning Dexter Walker and Zion Movement. We also have performing this year ASAP, a Christian rock band. So you are sure to be blessed. So please, take time out of your busy schedules to unwind, refresh, and recharge at JoyFest 2017. For more information about JoyFest, please log on to www.bowlingbrookjoyfest.com or search Bolingbrook Joy Fest to find us on Facebook. I look forward to seeing you and your family on September 9th at the Bolingbrook Joy Fest. Thank you. This was a promo that um, Mr. Watts did and, and showed some of the singers in past years or last year that was on or in Bridging the Gap. And, and you did a great job on this. You know, the first year, I think, uh, three years ago, I think I did it. And I go, oh, no, I'm not good for this. Let Mr. Watts do it. You've done, fan <laughs> you've done a fantastic job with this. We've gotten so many comments about that promo take that you've right. done and, and what's behind the scene, you know. Right. And that's a good thing, you know. And as I was going down the line talking about the people that are up here and what they do and Mr. Fink, who runs, you know, security for the Bolingbrook High School, he backs me up on a lot of things. We've gone to so many different areas and taught security to different district, police association, all. He's busy. Uh -huh. And besides just coming off our, you know, an operation, uh -huh. he's still involved. Uh -huh. I mean, I know his wife would like to keep him home and keep her husband around some <laughs> because his passion for Joy Fest is so strong that he's here working as one of the committee people. And we appreciate that because trying to run a high school like Bolingbrook and throw almost 3,700 students and keep it to the point it's one of the safest schools in the country, right. you know, that is huge to have a person like that in place to do that. But yet and still he finds time to be a part of Joy Fest. Right. Pastor Kendrick, you've been in, involved in ministry for years. I mean, I've gone to your church. The first time I went to your church, you stood on a table and it scared me, <laughs> you know. I said, this man just jumped up on the table. You know, wow, where are the paramedics? But I mean, you have been so involved in this community that it has brought joy to so many different people. And that's huge to have a pastor that's out there that, that meets no strangers and has no limitations as far as who you are. Anyone can come to his church and get served and get what they need to be a better person. We thank you for who you are because you thank are you, really sir. strong. And then Pastor Jeremiah, who just the new kid on the block, yeah. you know, he came and I went for his service and I go, wow, I want to stay here a little longer <laughs> because he really ministers the word. And he has such a very unique style in doing so. And you'll see this at Joy Fest, how he emcees because he's a young man, young family, but yet and still all that work that he has to do for his ministry he still finds time to come and be part of Joy Fest. That is huge for somebody to have that. You know, so Pastor Jeremiah, I thank you for what you're doing for Joy Fest. I thank your love for the town of Bolingbrook. 
Uh, you've been out there, you're out there even more, and people love to hear you talk. So where is he from? I don't know, but uh, he's a great guy, so we really well, thank appreciate you. you. Thank you for having <laughs> us. Uh, it's, it's just an honor to be able to be asked to be an MC. And, and we're, it's an honor that you be here. Now, we got about 10 minutes left, and I know we got pastors up here, so I had to go a little long, get more time. You know, uh, and I'm going to start with you, Pastor Jeremiah. What message would you like to leave the viewing audience with when it comes to Joy Fest? And you got about a minute to do that. Well, really, our heart is that everyone is welcome. And really making people understand that. Because I know you could be sitting there rocking, watching this right now and thinking, uh, I might not know anybody, and uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out there and you know, will I find a place to sit? Is there, is there going to be a place for me? Um, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not really good with groups of people. You know, there, there's a variety of reasons why you could feel like, ah, maybe I'll just pass on that. I just want to encourage you, just come out. Just come out and try it. Try what it's going to feel like to get around a group of people. You don't have to be a believer in Jesus Christ. You don't have to believe uh, in the Bible or, or even in God. You can just come and just enjoy uh, the fellowship of being around other people, uh, being around people who uh, are, are full of love and full of acceptance and full of peace and grace for people. And so you might just have a lot going on in your life, and you just need to get around a positive environment like this. And I'd encourage you, you know, just go ahead and take that step. Come out, see what might happen if you take that first step. I bet you God might just meet you right after that first step. Thank you. Pastor Kendrick? I um, also concur with my, my colleague here that we are looking forward to having a good time uh, here at Joy Fest. I certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity of working with this community, uh, this committee as well as Sheldon uh, Watts and uh, Mr. Brown. But I'm excited about what I anticipate God going to do for us. And I'm asking you to bring your lawn chairs, bring your blankets, you can bring your headphones. I'm certain that you can also hear us on Bluetooth. Just, you can just come out and enjoy food, fun, praise, and fellowship. And one joy fest would do you good. So next year, you could invite somebody else. But in the meantime, tell your friends about Bowling Brook Joy Fest on September the 9th. That's right. <laughs> From 1 to 6, come and you will be blessed and you will not be stressed. Thank Amen. you. He got that time right. Thank you. That date. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Mr. Fink. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's Mr. Fink's right, right, right. Man, a few words. Yeah. Man, yeah. 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 Uh, it's an opportunity to come out and fellowship with everybody in the community. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting is that it's like almost like a homecoming for me when I come to Joy Fest. There's people I don't see all year because of our busy schedules, but yet they take time to come out. So it's, it's, it's being able to shake their hands. It's being able to welcome them. It's being able to reach out to new people in the community, develop new friendships, new contacts. Uh, to me, that's the heart of the matter, you know, being in touch with, with, with other residents and how we can interact just to make the community grow. So I encourage everybody to come out, uh, come out, worship, pray. Uh, we start that super early in the morning. That's, That's our right. shield for security. That's right. Walk in the property, making sure that we pray over the stage, making sure that we pray over the grounds. Uh, come enjoy a safe, wonderful, kid-friendly environment. We, we welcome you, and, and we want to see you. Reverend Noor? Well, first of all, remember that it is free. So you don't have to spend a dime to come to Joy Fest. Listen to some good music, whether you are into... Um, Christian rock, or you are into uh, a choir like Dexter Walker's award-winning choir that you've never seen before. You will be amazed. Uh, so come out, fellowship with friendly people, and know that the people that are around you will love on you. And if you're going through something, there's always going to be somebody there that will be able to pray for you. Absolutely. So just come out. And if you come out and you want to shop, we've got <laughs> Christian <laughs> vendors that sell Christian t-shirts. 
Uh, we've got people that are going to sell um, essential oils. We've got authors that are there that will sell their books and they'll sign them. We also have the LuLaRoe clothing line. And of course, like I said, we got plenty of food. And then, of course, the, the fantastic kid zone. Yes. If you just want to take a minute and get away from your hectic Saturday schedule, because I know Saturday can be very hectic, and it's also the day before the parade, take a minute, come out, and spend some time listening to some good Christian music and bring the kids and let them get some of that energy out in the kid zone, and then you'll be ready for Sunday, which is the Pathways Parade. But come out to Joy Fest Saturday, September 9th, 1 to 6, and remember the word free, F-R-E-E. -E. It is free, and you get your soul fed, and that's free. So come out and enjoy it with us. Okay, last but not least, our chairman, Mr. Well, Lunch. thank you, Mr. Brown. You, you said some real kind words earlier, and I just want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for having the vision uh, many, many years ago to establish Joy Fest. There were all of these other type of festivals, and you found the, the gap. You bridged the gap right. in creating Joy Fest. So we want to thank you for that and thank you for this opportunity to talk to our, our viewers today. I want to thank the committee. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts, and I really appreciate everyone sort of pulling their weight. Uh, that's how we uh, get to the, the final product. You mentioned the commitment, and it is a commitment, but for me, it's a labor of love. You know, I, I believe in the message. I believe in the premise of the event. And we see nationally, you know, there's so much conflict and discourse. And, you know, this event is all about blocking that out uh, for a few hours and just coming together as a community. And the Joy Fest is actually one of many events that we have here in this community that are just awesome to just come out and hang out with uh, uh, your, your fellow community residents from Bolingbrook and near and far coming out to, to enjoy our great community. And so it's great to have the Joy Fest uh, to be a part of that. It's unique in its message. Uh, and so as been mentioned here, you, don't, you do not have to be Christian per se. You do not have to be someone that uh, goes to church every week. It's really about you know, bringing the churches together but it's also about those that may not necessarily be engaged in the church coming out and just enjoying the day and, and hearing the word and being given the opportunity uh, to be ministered to uh, through music. So um, just want to say thank you to, to all. Thank you for uh, watching this show today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on September 9th uh, from 1 to 6 p.m. And, you know, I want to thank Mayor Claire for having that vision of doing the performing arts stage studio. I mean, it was a vision that is this place is better than most places around. Yes. And because of that, we have so many different <clears throat> events back there because every time you hear performers come and they look and they perform, they say, wow, this is one of the best places we've seen that's an outdoor, you know, venue to come out and perform. So we want to thank him for having that vision because without that vision, we'd still be standing on grass trying to do something, you know. <laughs> right. But now we got one of the best out there as a performing stage. I want to thank our camera crew because, as we very well know, we talk about volunteers. Mm -hmm. These men and women, uh, they put a lot of time in doing this mm -hmm. because doing this makes a big difference when they do something like this. So we want to thank them. We want yes. to thank Mike Allen, our security person, to make sure everyone does what he's supposed to do. <laughs> so this is, my name is Leroy Brown. This is bridging the gap as we bridge that gap and thank you for being here.